Recording gameplay has never been easier. Anyone can do it, but not many people can do it right. Laggy footage, blurry footage, or just no sound at all. Today, we're gonna show you how to record game footage in Streamlabs, all the settings to make that quality amazing, crisp and clear, to make your microphone and game sound perfect. But then I'm gonna show you the most important thing you will learn, something massive gaming YouTubers do for every recording, and that is how to record both your gameplay and a webcam at the same time inside Streamlabs without burning the webcam over the top of your game. This is so important because it gives you clean footage, meaning you can focus on one or the other, edit or zoom in on either without issue, and it makes your edits far more engaging for viewers. So let's go. Obviously to do all of this, you need to install Streamlabs. So head to streamlabs.com, I'll link it in the description and download it for your operating system. Click install and once it's done, you're ready to go. But look, Streamlabs is a good tool for a beginner. But if you're starting out, I want to strongly encourage you to use OBS instead. It'll be less intensive on your PC because Streamlabs is really just a skin that uses OBS as a base and then locks important tools behind paywalls or removes them entirely. This exact same video you're watching now but for OBS is linked in the description but look if you still want to use Streamlabs that's totally fine. I am not here to judge you. I'm just here to help you. After all, you can still use it to not just record games, but anything on your computer. You can stream with it, add graphics like these free overlays I made for you guys, or thanks to our sponsor Owned, who is doing a giveaway on this video, you can get much more professional, fully animated overlay packs as well. Let me show you how to enter that giveaway in the comments. Owned has given me dozens of vouchers to give out to you guys. These work alongside their global sale as well, which means right now you could go over there and grab pretty much any of their overlay packs, graphics, YouTube, social banners, you name it, for either free or just a few dollars. As I said, I'm giving them away in the comments. All you have to do to enter is comment hashtag owned giveaway and what you would grab if you won. Massive thank you to own.tv for supporting this channel and this video. If you want to support me guys, go support them with the link in the description or by entering the giveaway. And now back to the video. Once you have Streamlabs installed, you're going to open it, skip through a dozen pop-ups trying to sell you shit and see this big black box called a preview window. This is where your gameplay, camera and graphics will be. But first, I like to set up our video settings because it's the most complicated, but once it's done, you never have to worry again. So head to settings, click video. And first thing we're going to do is pick a resolution. Now, personally, I always record at 1920 by 1080p on both my base canvas and my output. The difference between these two settings is essentially base canvas is your preview window size and the output is what your final video size is going to be. The two main resolutions you'll pick between are 1920 by 1080 or 1280 by 720, aka 1080p or 720p. These days, 1080p tends to be the standard, but if you're on a low end computer, 720p might be a better option for you. So if you find Streamlabs is struggling later, you can come back here and drop your output to 720p and that way you're also scaling down 1080 to 720 for better quality but it won't be as intense. Below that is our FPS or frames per second. You'll set this either to 30 or 60 most of the time that is. However if you're say in Australia, Europe or another country that uses what's called PAL you might want your FPS set to 25 or 50 depending on where you're sending the footage later. That said I'm in Australia I still use 30 or 60 because it doesn't matter most of the time because it's all going to YouTube. With that, we're moving on to our output. Personally, I use advanced mode. I do recommend you do as well. So select that here in the output mode. Since we're focused on recording today, we'll click this tab here. But if you want a guide on streaming settings, subscribe and ask me nicely in the comments and I'll do that soon. Let's go down to the settings one at a time. First is recording path. This is where any recordings you do will end up being saved. I recommend making a folder called Streamlabs Recordings somewhere that you won't forget about and then changing this setting to that location. Below that is recording format. The most common you'll know is MP4 or potentially MOV, but we're not gonna record as either of those because if we did and your Streamlabs or PC crashed, turned off or generally stopped recording when you didn't want it to, the file would corrupt and be unusable later, meaning you might lose hours of your work. Between you and me, Streamlabs is gonna crash pretty often. So we're gonna be using MKV files instead and I'll show you how to convert these to MP4 files later for editing or sharing without any issues. It's easy, don't worry. Below that, we have our video encoder. This used to be so simple, but it's gotten more confusing as more graphics cards have become decent. Damn computer engineers trying to improve our hardware. Look, I'll try to keep this simple for you. The three I'm focusing on are NVENC H.264, X264, and AV1. To make this straightforward, if you're using any NVIDIA card past the GTX 600, which was released in 2012, so likely any NVIDIA card being used on a semi-new PC, you're going to pick NVENC H.264. This means you're using a special chip on your graphics card to encode footage. This chip is separate and just used solely for encoding and decoding, so it won't affect your gameplay performance. And if you're using a graphics card from before that, you'll likely use X264, which will be using your CPU to encode and decode instead. Finally, AV1 is a newer encoder, and I'll be honest, I am still learning the best case for using it. I will link directly a video in the description by Epos Vox, who has done extensive testing. If you want a deep dive, just don't tell him you're there after watching a Streamlabs guide. Below that, you have audio tracks, and it did turn on all six audio tracks, which means I can split my audio up so my mic and game aren't burned 
together in my footage later. Very recommended and you'll see why at the end of the video. Now, depending on if you use NVENC or X264, you will need to use different settings below, specifically for bitrate. A lot of people get bitrate confused because it is often talked about in relation to streaming on Twitch, which has a soft cap of 6,000. But bitrate, simply put, is the amount of information being saved or sent really. Higher bitrate means more information or higher quality, but it also means it's more taxing on your computer resources. Because of Twitch, I see a lot of new creators record footage offline at 6,000 bitrate, but that is actually kind of a low bitrate for recording 1080p footage. Heck, it's even low for streaming, but Twitch just decided to soft cap it and tell you all to get screwed. So let's try set this up properly. In the encoder settings, you have rate control. This will be CBR by default, which means you're recording at the same bitrate all the time. And below that, you set the bitrate of your choice. I found for 1080p, 60 frames per second, 16,000 to 18,000 gave me excellent quality for editing my gameplay footage later. But any higher, I couldn't tell a difference. And well, 8,000 to 9,000 will still give me very usable, clean footage. So if your PC is struggling, start at 8,000 to 9,000 and work your way up. The issue is because CBR means I am recording at the same bitrate the whole time, I end up with massive files and a lot of wasted data. I used it because Twitch preferred CBR and it just kind of stuck around. But if you want to get a little more complicated in your recordings, instead select CQP, which in short is smarter and will change the bitrate as needed so you're not wasting data. This does mean rather than setting a bitrate, you're setting a CQ level though. In short, low numbers here mean higher quality footage, but bigger files, and higher numbers mean lower quality footage, but lower files. I found recording at 15 gave me footage that was perfect and indistinguishable to viewers, so zero issues, but 20 also gave me totally usable footage. So if your Streamlabs can't handle 15, start at 20 and slowly lower it by one until you find a nice balance. Below that, we have preset. A good starting place for this is to set it to good quality, but it's quite self-explanatory. Changing this up or down uses more or less computer resources while giving a better or worse quality. Finally, since you're using NVENC, leave on Psycho Visual Tuning as NVIDIA recommends it, but GPU is set to zero and B-frames is set to two. I know that was a lot of detail, but hopefully you'll be able to follow my settings and understand how to change the important ones if your PC is struggling. I'll show you how to diagnose if your settings are too high in a second, but first, X264 CPU encoding settings are a little bit different, so I want to highlight those now. If you change the video encoder to X264 and scroll down to the encoder settings, you'll see CBR is the same and it also works the same as previously explained. But instead of CQP, we have one that's called CRF. This, while being called different, works kind of the same as CQP. Lower number better, but more intense, for example. The other settings are very similar to NBank as well, but if you are curious, I set mine to very fast and high and then adjust if needed from there. But wait, what does if needed actually mean? How can I tell if Streamlabs is struggling? Well, the fastest way is to record gameplay and watch the footage back. You'll pretty quickly be able to tell if there are any issues, but the best way is to try use the Streamlabs stats panel. If you look in the bottom right, you'll see a small graph button. Click this, you'll get a lot of information all of a sudden, such as CPU usage, current FPS, which are helpful, sure, but I want you to focus on the notification section, which will be talking about dropped, skipped, and lagged frames. Most don't know the difference, but learning this will make life a lot easier for troubleshooting. If you're not streaming and just recording, then dropped frames just won't happen because these are purely based on your internet or network connectivity. They happen when your connection or stability is having issues. Imagine it is like trying to send video over the internet through a big tube and frames keep leaking out of the holes. Next is lagged frames. Unlike OBS, Streamlabs won't show you your current frame usage. They'll simply pop up a notification if it starts to cause issues. Essentially, it's not helpful unless something actually goes wrong. Lagged frames are caused by high GPU usage, which means to solve these, you need to free up room on your GPU by lowering your resolution, general video settings, or other encoding settings by a bit, as I showed you how to earlier. Also in the notification section, you'll be told about skipped frames, which are caused by high CPU usage. And again, lower your resolution, general video settings, and other encoding settings, or if possible, switch to NVENC to utilize your GPU more. But with all of that, congratulations, the hard part is over, now it's smooth sailing. If you tried to record gameplay now, you'd get a big black screen and no audio, which isn't great. So let's add our audio settings by clicking settings, going to audio, and once you're there, you're met with six global audio sources. If you're using a microphone and want to record your voice while gaming, you'll click Mic Aux Audio 1 and select your microphone from the list. Then for all your other PC audio, such as games, Spotify, music, etc., you'll click desktop audio and set this to your default Windows system audio. For me, that is system bridgecast, but for you, it might be called something like headphones, speakers, or something else. While recording later, you can use these sliders to change how loud your voice and game are recorded. The goal is for your voice to reach roughly to minus 12 dB, and the game should sit around minus 30 to minus 24. It's important to understand that all audio on your PC will be picked up on desktop audio. So if you're recording your game and watching Netflix, well, you've now got Netflix audio in the recording and everyone knows that you love watching Love is Blind? <laughs> what a freak. This is a really simple audio setup just to get you started. If you want a detailed video on how to split your audio sources or make your mic sound amazing, they'll be linked in the description because it's far more complex. Before we move on though, click the three dots again and click Advanced Audio Properties. Over on the right, you will see tracks and a heap of checkboxes. 
Early in settings, we turned on all six tracks for recording, remember? This is where we say what gets recorded to each of those tracks. I'd recommend turning everything off to start with. And now if you're streaming, normally everything is sent to track one because that's what your stream will hear. But for recording, you can then split these up. For example, I've sent everything to track one so my stream can hear it, but then I put my microphone on track two and my game on track three. This means if I take my footage into editing software later, my game and microphone are separate on track two and three so I can edit them individually. If we didn't do this and I wanted to make the game louder or quieter, well, it would affect my voice as well. Again, you can split all this up further, such as recording Discord on its own track as well, which will be in the video in the description. But with our audio added, it's time to capture your game and then I will show you my literal magic settings to record clean gameplay and camera in the same file. First, in Streamlabs on the left, you will have a scenes doc. Rename this to game scene and right next to it is the sources doc. We're adding a source to this doc that captures your game. So click plus and you're met with a list of potential sources. Your eyes probably went straight to game capture, which we can use, but there are actually three options I want you to know about. If we add game capture and double click it, you'll see mode. Most leave this on full screen applications, but I prefer changing this to capture specific window and then selecting my game under that. I leave on anti-cheat, but something people often forget is your capture cursor. Turn this on or off if you want your cursor or your mouse in the recording or not. That is all you need for game capture, but sometimes Streamlabs won't recognize or let you capture games using game capture. So instead you'll use window or if it's really dire, desktop capture. Window capture works the exact same as game. You add it as a source, pick your window and you're done. But again, if that doesn't work, you can use desktop to capture your entire desktop. But be careful because doing this, as I said, captures your entire desktop, which means if you minimize or alt tab the game, you can reveal all those homework folders that you're trying to hide from mum. But what if you wanna record your webcam as well so people can see your reaction when you get that sick triple collateral on dust? Well, click the plus button, click add camera source and select your webcam. If you're recording like this, you'd be burning this camera in over the footage. You can't remove it easily later or at all, to be honest, which you might be fine with, but I hate it. So instead, let me show you the trick that giant YouTubers use instead. So we're gonna go to our settings and change a few things. First, we're gonna go to video and change our resolution to be double the width of what we're currently recording at. So if we're recording 1920 by 1080 p then we're gonna change this to 3840 by 1080 p and 1280 by 720 becomes 256 by 720. Once you've done that, hit apply, go to output recording settings. And if you're using CBR to keep your settings simple, you'll simply just need to double or potentially depending on the game, for example, if it has really high movement, increase your bitrate by 2.5 times. So if you're using 8,000 bitrate to record 1080p, you'll double it to 16,000 or potentially 20,000. But if you're using CQP or CRF, you'll drop this down a little lower. So for example, I found 15 still gave me great quality, but obviously it's important to remember increasing bitrate and resolution will increase the load on your PC. So this might not work for low-end computers. But if you're gonna give it a go, once that's done, hit apply. Go to your source list and make sure your game is full screen on the left and your camera is full screen on the right with no overlap. This means essentially we now have two 1920 by 1080p files, but in the same file right next to each other. Start your recording as normal and then once you're done, stop recording. But wait, this file is weird and long and stretched and it's also an MKV, so how do I edit any of this? Well, first go to file in Streamlabs and I'd say just remix the file from MKV to MP4 but Streamlabs removed this incredibly helpful tool for some reason. So instead, I guess install an open OBS. Click file, remux, select the file you recorded, click remux and it converts an MKV to an MP4. Because remember, MKV is great at avoiding corrupted files, but terrible for editing. You might think this is a pain, but you do not want to record as an MP4 inside Streamlabs. You will regret it when you lose six hours of footage because Streamlabs keeps crashing on you. And you'll thank me for telling you to use an MKV or you'll just entirely swap to OBS. Open your editor of choice, I love Premiere Pro and drag the MP4 file in. This will create a new timeline that matches its settings, which isn't what we want because nobody's watching YouTube at this weird wide resolution. So right click the sequence, click settings and change the resolution to 1920 by 1080. Or again, if you're using 720, change it down to 720p. Now click the file and reposition it so the game is full screen over everything. Duplicate that file and layer it exactly on top of it and then drag the top one over so that it is just the webcam on full. By doing this, as you can see, this means my audio and my camera and my gameplay are all synced up perfectly and it only took me a few minutes. 
If you want, you can add a crop effect and crop the game off on the top layer so it's just the camera and do the exact same on the bottom, but just crop the camera out so it's just the game. You'll also see I have six audio tracks in my editing software. That's because we set those up earlier, remember? And you'll see here, track one is all of my audio, but track two is just my mic and track three is just my game. With this, I can edit my gameplay, camera, and all of my audio individually, easily, and make the best possible videos I can. And if you want to talk about making the best possible videos I can, click this video right here. I mastered seven content creation skills in seven days. It was considered my most valuable video I've ever made. I'll see you guys next week.